stuff. But there's some interesting glaze things in here as well. So, um, this is a commission for a lady's 99th birthday. Um, I'm mailing this out uh, tomorrow. Um, her name is Anne. Happy birthday, Anne. All right. So it's turquoise, blue, green, copper, red. Here is the... I like this combination with the green and the yellow. It's very summery. Um, and that, So it's apple green with the yellow. And that's just uh, my base matte glaze, which I use for my oatmeal, with sunshine uh, yellow for mason stain added to it. I have sets of bowls. I made a bunch of soup bowls, basically. Um, I was running low on them. And this is just a planter bottom. Planters sell really well this time of the year, so it's another base for a planter. And another soup bowl in the yellow and the apple green. This is that set of plates I'm doing for someone. One of them was very small, but the others are this size. Um, actually, that one's the same size as that one. It just looks smaller in the picture. <laughs> This is one that I'm going to change the glaze. I've mixed a new dark blue up because my dark blue is just not fun anymore. <laughs> so there you go. This is dark blue with oatmeal over the top. Um, this one is the apple green with the oatmeal. Uh, and this is a, a mix of oatmeals that I mixed together because I'm consolidating my oatmeals now. So I'll never be able to make it again. But, um, but in actual fact, this oatmeal is beautiful. I mean, isn't that amazing? It was just two oatmeals that were from my oatmeal tests, mixing them together. So that's what happens if I can remember what I did. Yeah, I'm sure we can get it again anyway. It probably is the folk art white mixed with the other oatmeal, is my guess. So. There's another set of soup bowls here. This is variegated blue with bright blue and oatmeal over the top. That's a nice combination. I do sets of four whenever I make soup bowls. And there's a lady coming in who's ordered four, so she'll have a few to pick from. But she wanted blues, so... In actual fact, this is the set that she wanted. These are the blues. And that one's worked out pretty good. That's waxing brown with the blue and the oatmeal which doesn't like the gas kiln. So I figured out how to get it by just blasting air into the, the kiln while I'm firing. Uh, so there's loads of air in the kiln with the gas. This is one of those older kiln shelves, really much heavier than the advancer shelves. I did it the hard way. I went from corderite to buying those other shelves, and I can't remember the name of those. Even though they had advancer shelves out at the time, I just didn't want to spend the money on them. Um, so I bought the intermediary priced ones. Um, and they're fine, and they're working. They're 10 years old now. Um, uh, but um, basically, they're just heavy, uh, and, and they do warp a little bit over time, whereas the new advancer shelves do not warp at all. And with the kiln wash on the top, the pots just release instantly. So I know it's a lot, but my advice is if you want to get the Rolls Royce of kiln shelves, is to get the advances up front, which I think will save money in the long run with there being less weight and volume, not volume, the mass, um, you're probably going to get the uh, savings over the long term. So there's eight of these bowls, because I think these are the ones that lady wants. So she'll have four and I'll keep four. Hey, maybe she'll take all of them, I don't know. They turned out really nice. There's even green showing up there from the waxing brown over the blue. Isn't that funny? Blue with waxing brown over the top gives you green. The fun of clay. There's too much to know here. I mean, I know it's just a lot figure out and remember so I'm keeping a lot of notes you'll notice from my videos I'm really keeping a lot of notes now so, okay here's 
the other two apple green with the yellow. It just really brightens up that upper half, makes it a really nice green. And I know what dinnerware, one lady told me once, green should never be seen for dinnerware. I'm not sure I agree with that because, you know, salads are green and <laughs> so anyway, I think uh, food would look nice on green. Depends on the green, of course, but um, that's another one, the dark blue with the oatmeal, which uh, I am definitely changing my dark blue. It's gone sort of lighter, I don't know why. I'm going to add some more cobalt to it first, and that's the set of those ones. This, believe it or not, is Brandy's Red when you don't do the special firing sort of sequence that I've given out before in a previous video. It just goes brown. But, um, so that shows you what happens if you don't know what you're doing with Brandy's Red. A few of the glazes, like the 10 gold, has been pinholing, and I think it's because of overfiring. So I did the cone 7 in this just to see whether that happened. Ten Maku gold. How about that? <laughs> and it didn't actually pinhole or anything. So I think I was possibly in the other firings over firing a touch. This one I really made sure I didn't bend over that cone seven. But look how beautiful Ten Maku gold is. There's this, and there's the advancer shells. There was a little run here, but I'll just sand that a little bit. Um, that's perfect. And this is a uh, planter for bonsai. And there's the base for it. But you can see the technical gold is just absolutely perfect. Here's the bright blue. All right, so this is with oatmeal over the top. Um, did I dip anything else? I think that was all I had on these, just the oatmeal. This is my mouse brown, mastering cone six glazes, which I call mouse gray, because it tends to look more gray. And that's with my yellow oatmeal over it. And here's a tricky, tricky dicky. When I fire these planters, I fire them with a mug inside each one, so I don't waste space. All right, so make full use of all the space in a kill. Oh, <laughs> I even, on this one, had the shell supported by a prop inside the piece. And these are my plant flavors, so I'm gonna skip over these really fast in this video. You'll see the kiln unloaded faster than it shows on video. But I make these to protect my plants outside. When I make a cutting and I've got a new bush started, uh, I weed whack it off most of the time. Um, so, because I forget where it is and I'm in the zone. Um, so I'm making these to put in the ground around the cutting so the weed whacker goes <laughs> No, dead plants. Anyway, there you go. Okay, here's my yellow with a little bit of green on the bottom. Those are happy summertime mugs. I have a lot of mugs on the go because somebody's ordered 40 for a shop. So, um, so I've made 40 mugs for them to pick from. Actually, I've made about 80, and um, so they'll take the 40 they want. And here is a really, really nice mug. This is Tenmaku Gold with blue, dark blue. So my dark blue worked a little bit in this one. And then the oatmeal over the top. That's a beauty. 
Every so often you get a piece out of a firing and you think, wow, look at that. Oh, and the green on the bottom too. So there's four glazes on that piece. And the green on the bottom, this is the same one, but I dipped the oatmeal a lot further down. I call this lizard scale oatmeal, and you can see why. But isn't that a beauty too? I hope I got more of these in here. And this is the one that I sell most of in the summer. It's blue, green, copper, red with yellow oatmeal over the top to make it a bit beach-like, except it fades out there a little bit. It's still nice. Same with blue gold, working beautiful in this firing. And we're just debating whether these planters should stand out in the garden like they will like this, or whether they should be green and subtle underneath the plants. Because when the plant gets bigger, of course, it will be contained by this. But I can take this off once the plant is established. Whether these will sell to other people, I do not know. There's no work in them, practically. So just throw a cylinder and cut. When you're trimming, you just cut this off. Okay, another Tenmaku Gold with the oatmeal and the dark blue. So every one of these is different. And there's a tankard, my oatmeals with the green, and another oatmeal over the top by the look of it. Very subtle, but really nice. Stilts are coming off beautifully today. That one is uh, for the place down the road, the hotel that I sell mugs to as well. Oatmeal and apple green. I've got a whole bunch of glaze recipes going to be posted at the end of a video I'm doing at the moment on Randy's Red again. Some tests, so I decided to post a bunch because everybody's asking. And now I can just refer you to the Randy's Red video. Okay, that's the dark blue. This is this has just turned out beautiful. This has been sitting on my glaze shelf for ages from the video I did months ago about the little vases, and I still had some I hadn't fired. But there's a really nice little bud vase. And there's oh, this is number 60 in glaze, but wow. It's done some really nice crystals there. Number 16. And I think it had my dark blue and the oatmeal over the top. So isn't that pretty? More of the plant savers. There's the mouse brown in that mastering cone six glazes. Don't you think that's more like mouse gray? Somebody said it turns out brown and I've always had it turn out gray. You know, I've made a whole bunch of... Wow, that was a big tractor trailer. My studio is right on both of my buildings. There's a road right between. Most of the year it's barely used, but this is August and that was a big tractor trailer. Really nice blue in this one. Oh. Somebody liked the grey that I did in the other video and this time I put my sort of variegated blue down the center to give a really moody look to it. I'm not sure which way around it should be seen. Um, it kind of has a landscape feel with the ocean and the sky above it.
So, uh, but I. Ooh, that is pretty. That's the oatmeal over the blue, green, copper, red, and the blue, green, copper, red dipped. Uh, so I dipped it this way in blue, green, copper, red, then that way in blue, green, copper, red, and put some oatmeal on the top. So that turned out really nice. And then I gave it some blue on the inside, which will never be seen because they'll have soil in them. So. Another oatmeal or blue over tenmaku, but that one's less exciting than the others because it doesn't have the uh, fluting on it, probably. Oatmeal mix, very nice. And another yellow oak. Nice ring to it there. Um, Tenmaku gold over the bottom. And these are for the Mahe Bakery. My look, but my oatmeal mix over. I keep a set of mugs on hand for a lot of the places that I make mugs for, just so when they order, they get them instantly. Of course, that kind of sets a precedent that they think they're always there, so it locks me into always having some. Variegated blue. That's very pretty as well. Uh, this one ran right to the edge without sticking as well to the kiln shell. And that's the blue, green, copper, red. I glaze these quite thickly. But they're really nice because of that. Uses a lot of glaze up though. When I take these out, I've got to remember that there's something inside them instead of just dragging them off the shelf and seeing the piece drop down on the bottom. Oh, and that one, see, it actually did stick to the shelf a little bit, but I'll just have to grind it off a bit. That is really interesting. I don't remember. This was one of the old ones I've had sitting around a while, so I don't know what I did on there. I suspect because it ran, it's actually very giddy blue over Tenmaku gold. And there's the gray again. There you go, inside. Turquoise mat. That's the recipes in the Randy's Red, and that's a little, it's an old mug I glazed months ago as well. Blue, uh, Tenmaku Gold with oatmeal and dark blue over it and green on the bottom. Dark blue is my least favorite in this whole firing. It's just, uh, of course, this could be number 16 glaze instead of dark blue. Maybe I'm mistaken because I glazed some of these ages ago. Tenmaku gold with rutile green over it. Here's another one of the Tenmaku gold with much more oatmeal. And that is really pretty. Mix oatmeal. Funny when you get a glaze that's so pretty and then you don't know exactly how you got it. Not so funny. Mouse gray with my yellow oatmeals over the top. That's very pretty. You can just tell a little bit of yellow in there. And mouse gray again. 
And this is such a beautiful gray when I do the gas kiln. It never works as well as this in the electric kiln. Number 16 with dark blue and oatmeal over the top. Number 16 glaze is basically my bright blue glaze with a little bit of iron added as well. Turquoise matte, blue, green, copper, red with the yellow. I love the turquoise matte. It does nothing over the top in my last video I posted where Rand is red. Blue, green, the turquoise matte has disappeared. It has no covering quality. Some glazes really do cover well and produce a new glaze, though others just melt into the other glaze. This is a nice turquoise blue, green, copper, red, green on the bottom. hanging around from previous videos on vases. This was sitting forever on my glaze shelves. There's never found a spot for it in a kiln. Another great big blue planter. These show up on the road on the display really well, so that's why. And of course we live on the ocean, so everybody wants blue. little vases. They're like small drinking glasses. And that would be variegated blue with oatmeal and number 16 glaze over it, I think. Which is what the repeat is a bright blue glaze base with the with the cobalt and some added iron in it. And that gives you that less more of a gray than a blue. Inside never gets seen but I wonder about not glazing the inside of them to save glaze. Like, do people really care since it's going to have soil in it? A nice little turquoise bud balls. Another matte turquoise. Number 16 glaze again with the oatmeal over the top. These were nice little bud vases. Also, they could be used for sake. Nowhere to put anything. One more blue planter with some variegated blue on the bottom. Or no, it, yeah, I think it was variegated blue. Could have been number 16. And then oatmeal on the top. These all have little drip trays as well to go with them. Anyway, thanks. It's August the 4th, so summer's disappearing. Um, stay safe, and, um, and we'll see you next time. All right. Don't forget to do the subscribe thing. All right. Bye.